so if we take the pravastatin pravastatin the importance of this particular pravastatin is this pravastatin it has very minimum drug interactions right it has very minimum drug interactions so this pravastatin compared to the other drugs if you take the other drugs they are being metabolized by the microsomal enzyme system whereas the pravastatin it is metabolized by right it is metabolized by non microsomal right it is metabolized by non microsomal enzyme system right it is metabolized by non microsomal enzyme system and another important point is if you take the interaction with the food even with the interaction of the food if you take the pravastatin it has very minimum food interaction right it has very minimum food interaction as such if you take the pravastatin the food increases right if you take if you compare the other statins and as well as the pravastatin if you take the food food it increases the absorption of all statins right food increases the absorption of all statins except pravastatin right except pravastatin so the food has no effect on the absorption of the pravastatin whereas it will increase the absorption of the other statins now the other important point what you should remember about the pravastatin is with majority of this particular statins the most common adverse effect is myopathy the most common adverse effect is myopathy whereas you take the pravastatin pravastatin it has very minimum risk of myopathy right it has very minimum risk of myopathy and not only that this pravastatin it has minimum cns penetration right it has minimum cns penetration and not only that the very important point about the pravastatin is pravastatin it will decrease the fibrinogen levels all right it will decrease the fibrinogen levels so these are some of the very important points about the pravastatin right it has very minimal drug interaction why because it is being metabolized by non microsomal enzyme system and it has minimum food interaction also whereas if you take the other statins all other statins their absorption is increased along with the food whereas the pravastatin absorption will not be affected by the food and it has minimum risk of myopathy and it has minimum cns penetration and it also decrease the fibrinogen levels now you take the structure of this particular statins right you take the structure of these particular statins structurally if you take right we have inactive compounds or the pro, pro drugs and then we have the active compounds all right so structurally if you take like they are we can classify them into three if you take the drugs called lovastatin and as well as simvastatin they are inactive lactone pro drugs right so you take the lovastatin and as well as the simvastatin and as well as the simvastatin both of these drugs they have inactive lactone pro drugs right these are inactive lactone pro drugs whereas you take the other statins like for example pravastatin the pravastatin it has an active lactone ring 
right pravastatin it has an active lactone ring all right next we have some more statins like you take atorvastatin you take rosuvastatin and then you take the other one that is the fluvastatin that is the fluvastatin so atorvastatin rosuvastatin and as well as fluvastatin they are the fluorine containing congeners all right these are fluorine containing congeners all right so the multiple choice questions can be asked depending upon whether they are pro drugs whether they are active drugs you take the lovastatin and simvastatin they are pro drugs because they have inactive lactone pro drug where they have to be converted into active form whereas you take the pravastatin it is an active form whereas atorvastatin rosuvastatin and fluvastatin they are also the active forms which are containing the fluorine containing congeners so after having discussed about the structure that is the pro drugs and as well as the active forms now you take the metabolism of these particular drugs you take the lovastatin and as well as simvastatin all right lovastatin and simvastatin they undergo they undergo extensive first pass metabolism right they undergo extensive first pass metabolism and that is the reason why these are being administered as pro drugs right that is the reason why these are being administered as pro drugs whereas you take the other drugs that is pravastatin right that is pravastatin and other drugs like fluvastatin atorvastatin right atorvastatin and rosuvastatin right and rosuvastatin these drugs these drugs they are being administered as active drugs why because they don't have an inactive lactone group they have an active lactone group or fluorine compound so that is why these are being administered as active drugs whereas you take this lovastatin and simvastatin they have an inactive lactone group they have to undergo extensive first pass metabolism so that is why they are being administered as the pro drugs all right now you take all these particular drugs right you take all these particular drugs that is lovastatin simvastatin rosuvastatin atorvastatin and fluvastatin except pravastatin they are extensively metabolized by hepatic right they are extensively metabolized by hepatic microsomal enzymes right they are extensively metabolized by hepatic microsomal enzymes whereas you take pravastatin pravastatin it is metabolized by sulfation this will be asked as multiple choice question right this is being metabolized by sulfation so sulfation it is a non microsomal enzyme pathway right sulfation it is a non microsomal so because these drugs undergo metabolism via microsomal enzyme they have higher amount of drug interactions whereas you take the pravastatin which is being metabolized by non microsomal that is the reason why it has least drug interactions right that is the reason why it has least 
drug interactions all right now now after having discussed about how they are being metabolized now let me discuss what is the route of administration of this particular drugs all the statins they can be absorbed orally right all the statins they can be absorbed orally but the multiple choice question here is among all the statins which of the statin has maximum oral absorption the maximum oral absorption it is for fluvastatin this will be asked as multiple choice question right the maximum absorption is for the fluvastatin next you take the effect of food right what did i discuss i have discussed this point already the food increases the absorption of all drugs except pravastatin all right so the food increases the absorption of all the drugs right except pravastatin right except pravastatin is that clear now now after having discussed about this remember among all the statins right among all the statins the longest acting statin is rosuvastatin this will be a multiple choice question rosuvastatin it is the long acting statin right it is a long acting statin whereas you take the potent statin you take pitavastatin right you take the pitavastatin pitavastatin is the most potent statin right pitavastatin is the most potent statin right so these are some of the points about their pharmacokinetics and as well as the pharmacodynamics of the statins now let me discuss next the adverse effects and as well as the uses of these particular statins so let me discuss the adverse effects of this particular statins so if you take the adverse effects of these particular drugs mainly they include myopathy this is a very important adverse effects associated with statins and the other one is hepatotoxicity right the other one is the hepatotoxicity so these are the major adverse effects of these particular drugs now the point what you have to understand is about the myopathy right the point what you have to understand is about myopathy the chances of myopathy increases if these drugs they are administered with fibrates right when statins when they are administered with phenofibrate then the chances of myopathy increases right the chances of myopathy increases all right now what will happen once the individual has myopathy once the individual has myopathy he will proceed to develop what is called as rhabdomyolysis right he will proceed to develop what is called as rhabdomyolysis so rhabdomyolysis it is nothing but the breakdown of the muscle now this muscle it will contain a substance called myoglobin so once there is an increased rhabdomyolysis more and more myoglobin is released into the circulation and once this myoglobin once it is passing through the kidney it will cause the renal shutdown all right so because of the rhabdomyolysis the individual will develop what is called as renal shutdown right the individual will develop what is called renal shutdown all right whereas among that various statins whichever we have discussed you take this particular very important drug that is pravastatin right you take this particular important drug that is pravastatin pravastatin it remains or it is confined only to the liver right it is confined only to the liver 
now because it is only confined to the liver it is safe in this particular regard of rhabdomyolysis all right so the risk of myopathy with pravastatin is very less okay so pravastatin it remains confined to the liver so that is the reason why it is safer in myopathy right it is very much safer in myopathy all right now another important point the caution what we need to take is these agents they should be avoided all right these particular statins they should be avoided in pregnancy and lactation all right they should be completely avoided in pregnancy and as well as lactation all right next now you take the uses of these particular statins right next you take the uses of these statins statins they are the first line drugs for hypercholesterolemia which type of hypercholesterolemia these statins are useful is these statins they are useful for type 2a and as well as type 2b primary hyperlipoproteinemia so these statins they are useful for type 2a and as well as type 2b primary hyperlipoproteinemia and these are also useful for secondary dyslipidemias like hypercholesterolemia right they are also useful for secondary dyslipidemias like hypercholesterolemia and these statins they are very much indicated in the conditions whichever are causing secondary dyslipidemia for example you take diabetes mellitus that is one of the clinical condition which will cause secondary dyslipidemia that is hypercholesterolemia and you take nephrotic syndrome that is another clinical condition which will cause hyperlipidemia so in that clinical condition the statins are being indicated all right next now the other uses if you take in case of children in children with heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia right in children with heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia pravastatin is approved for children under 8 years whereas other statins are approved for children of about 10 years remember this point up to 8 years pravastatin is indicated but children about 10 years the other statins are indicated all right so this is completely about the discussion of the statins